In this video, we're going to look at uh, the February March 2018 paper 4, question number 3. This question concerns graphs in symphonic motion, magnetic fields, and AC circuits. So we are going to be looking at the graphs in symphonic motion, magnetic fields, and AC circuits, and then we will delve into the question. Right, so symphonic motion, relationship between displacement and acceleration. In displacement, x is equal to a sine omega t. Now x is our displacement, and uh, a is the maximum displacement, which is called the amplitude. So the maximum displacement from the undisturbed position. Omega is angular frequency. Okay, angular frequency, that's what the syllabus wants you to say. So if you differentiate that expression once, you, you get the velocity, which is dx by dt. Uh, that's differentiating with respect to t, the time. So remember, when differentiating, you first of all differentiate what's in the brackets there. That's with respect to t, you get omega. Then that omega multiplies the amplitude, becomes omega a. Then you differentiate the trig function. Sine gives you cos. So it's going to be omega a cos omega t. Now if you differentiate this one uh, with respect to t again, you are going to get um, uh, or minus omega squared a sine omega t. Again, you differentiate what's in the brackets first. It becomes omega. And then that omega multiplies that omega becomes omega squared that you see there. Then multiplies that a. And then differentiating course, you get minus sine. So that's why you see the minus sine over there. So it becomes acceleration is equal to minus omega squared a sine omega t. Now this a sine omega t is what we started off with, which is the displacement. So we can remove this and put x. So which means that a is equal to minus omega squared x. As you can see, the relationship between the acceleration and the displacement, the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, and the acceleration and displacement are in opposite directions. So this is the definition for symphonic motion. If you can see the relationship between the displacement and the velocity, this displacement is a sign, and then velocity is a course. So as you can see, these two graphs are pi over 2 radians out of phase with each other. Sine and course. Remember, they just separated by 90 degrees. Right, so if we are to draw a graph of uh, A versus X, the acceleration versus the displacement, you get such a graph here. So it's a straight line graph that passes through the origin with a negative gradient. Okay. Now moving on to talk about the relationship between displacement and velocity. As you can see, we say that they are pi over two radians out of phase with each other. Now this is the velocity. And then that's angular frequency. And then this is the maximum displacement, which is the amplitude. And then this is the instantaneous uh, displacement. That is where the, if it's an oscillation, where the bob would be uh, the instantaneous displacement. Okay. So when x is equal to a, the velocity is zero. That is when x is equal to the maximum displacement, the velocity will be zero. Okay. If we take, for instance, an, a pendulum. Right, so that's that, and then you've got uh, the rest position, which is uh, the undisturbed position, and then the extremes right there. So when it is passing through uh, this equilibrium position, that is when you have your velocity maximum, and then your x will be minimum. And then on the extremes, the velocity will be zero, and then x will be a maximum. So you see, they're always uh, opposing each other. If one is maximum, the other one is minimum. The same applies 
here on this other extreme x will be maximum v will be zero okay so the maximum velocity is given when v squared is equal to omega squared a that is the x component to be equal to zero but remember this is the displacement from the equilibrium position so if this displacement from the equilibrium position is zero in other words we haven't moved from the equilibrium position then we have uh, the maximum velocity okay and then the velocity will be minimum when this 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 minus this the, when the amplitude the maximum displacement is equal to this displacement from the fixed position which will be zero here so the velocity will be zero right on the extremes right there now those of you that do mathematics would know right away that if omega squared on that function day if omega squared is equal to zero then that's an equation of a straight line so v squared will be equal to a squared minus x squared so if you draw a graph of v versus x or x versus v you are going to have a perfect circle however in this case we do have a, an omega the angular frequency so which means that we're going to get an ellipse okay so it's going to be an ellipse let me change the color over here so then ellipse which is going to be something like that so that's what you get if you have got uh, an omega squared which is not zero which is not one sorry right so that's those are the uh, the graphs one for the acceleration versus displacement and this one for the accelerator uh, displacement versus the velocity now let's look into uh, the question now the no the no march 2018 paper 4 to question number three says a mass that's part a is undergoing simple harmonic motion with amplitude x naught the maximum velocity of the mass says amplitude v naught on figure 3.1 show the variation with displacement x of the velocity v of the mass right like i said here i said that um, you're going to get an elliptical shape of the graph with v maximum v a minimum v and then we have got the displacements that is uh, the left and the right the maximum displacements so that's the same thing we're going to do here we do have x naught minus x naught v naught minus v naught and then we're going to draw our graph okay so our graph looks something like this right so moving on to part b now part b concerns uh, magnetic field so let's look into it a straight stiff wire carries a constant current in a region of uniform magnetic flux density the angle theta between the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field is varied the maximum force on the wire is f naught on figure 3.2 show the variation with angle theta of the force f on the wire for values of theta between 0 degrees and 90 degrees now we know that uh, in magnetic fields f is equal to b i l sine theta okay b i l sine theta is uh, what we're going to get so i is the current right there so what we're going to investigate here is the relationship between f and uh, theta okay so that's what you're going to get now the graph of sine theta everyone knows that it is like that okay so theta bit uh, versus sine theta versus, uh, versus time and this is going to be 90 degrees so 0 90 180 270 then 360 
so the graph up to 90 degrees would end there okay so that's what we want so which means on our graph we are going to get graph of up to there which is going to so that's a sine graph but we have just considered up to 90 degrees like that so that is uh, the graph now moving on to the last one which is ac circuits now in ac circuits uh, a sinusoidal supply is frequency 250 hertz and rms uh, potential difference 2.8 volts on the axis of figure 3.3 show quantitatively the variation with time t of the voltage v for one cycle of the varying voltage now we know that uh, uh, we've been given the rms so uh, v rms in this case is 2.8 volts so to get the peak voltage v naught is going to be equal to uh, 2.8 root 2 so if you multiply by the square root of 2 you're going to get it's something like 3.95 if I'm not mistaken and uh, to 2 SF because the information there is to 2 SF you're going to get that is 4.0 volts so we know that uh, that's going to be our peak voltage which is at 4 right there so it's going to be 4 and minus 4 and our graph again is uh, you know the graph of V is equal to V naught sine omega T that's in alternating current so that's what we have there now we also give been given the frequency the relationship between frequency and period is f is equal to 1 over t so t will be equal to 1 over f so which is 1 over 250 which is going to give you uh, 0 0.004 Let's see 1 2 3 yes which is 4 milliseconds so it means when we're drawing our graph we know the period is supposed to be 4 milliseconds so it's going to move from there to there to there to there back again to there and then pass on to there so that's how it's going to be okay so that's it So our period is 4 milliseconds as shown over there. Right, so I hope these questions have really helped. Um, I've just looked at the part that was asking about the graphs. I didn't look at the other part, which is the last part which we need to explain. Right, I hope you're going to subscribe to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel and also... Uh, ring the notification bell so that you get alerted of my future videos and uh, don't forget